Can we have the next question from the brother side? I am Mr. Kumar, a profession by teaching. Uh, this is my question. I see in Sri Lanka and India, there are many divisions among the Muslims, but they follow the same, the Holy Quran and the follow of the uh, Hadith. The, but even though they are following the same matters, there are many divisions in Sri Lanka as well as in India. So I would like to get a better reply. I waited till the right person to come at the right time. Please go ahead. Dr. Kumar has asked a very good question, very important question. He says that Muslims in Sri Lanka and India and other parts of the world, they believe in the same God, they believe in the same Quran, they believe in the same Hadith. But why are the different divisions, why are the different sects? The reply is given in the Quran, in Surah Al-Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 103. It says, wa bihabli wa la Hold to the rope of Allah strongly and be not divided. The rope of Allah, the rope of Almighty God is the Quran. So Quran says, hold strongly to the rope of God, to the rope of Allah, the glorious Quran, and the say hadith, and be not divided. So in Islam, there should not be any divisions. Furthermore, the Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, that, O Prophet, if anyone makes divisions, sects in the religion of Islam, O Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affair on the day of judgment. So making divisions, making sects in Islam is haram. It is prohibited. That is the reason what you find, I do know, that there are many Muslims who have different, different names, but the right name you should call is only Muslim. And all Muslims should follow the glorious Quran and the Sai, sai authentic Hadith. Any scholar says anything, if it matches with the Quran and Sai Hadith, you have to follow. If it does not match, you should throw it away. To make different organizations. To make different organizations, some want to work in the field of education, some want to work in the field of religion, some want to help the poor, there's no problem. Doing jama, making different organizations, no problem. But as a deen, as a religion, we cannot be divided. We cannot, there can be no sects. The Quran says you should not make sex. But our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's hadith, the Sahih Hadith of Tirmidhi, Hadith number 171, beloved Prophet said that there will be 73 sects in the religion of Islam. The Prophet did not say you should make. The Prophet, Allah says don't make, but Prophet said there will be. Unfortunately, we Muslims are divided. And the Prophet predicted that. The people asked, that, and the Prophet said, only one will go to Jannah, only one will go to Paradise. The Prophet asked who, I mean the Sahabas, the companion asked who, the Prophet said, those that will follow me and will follow the Quran, that follow the Quran and my example. Today, unfortunately, we have different sects, Shia, Sunni, Hanafi, Shafi, Hanbali, Deobandi, Barevli, what was the beloved Prophet? There is no Shia sin in the Quran. What was the beloved Prophet? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a Muslim. The Quran says in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 64, Say that I am a Muslim. Anyone who says a Muslim, Muslim is a person who submits his will to God. Any scholar says anything. All the four great Ahmad, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, all of the four great scholars, they said, if you find any of my fatwa, which goes against Allah and His Rasul, you throw my fatwa on the wall. Therefore, I say, whatever Dr. Zakir Naik says in Islam is zero. What I say is zero, what you have to follow is Quran and Sai Hadith. Therefore, all my answers are backed with Quran and Sai Hadith. Chapter number so and so, verse number so and so. All these four great scholars, we love them all. We respect them all. They never came to make sex or divisions. They came for people to understand the religion better. But unfortunately, the followers, they started making divisions. Unfortunately. What we have, to, any scholar says anything, if it matches with the Quran and the Sai Hadith you obey, otherwise reject it. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, 59, Atiullah, Atiur Rasul. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. And it says, and those who have been given the power of commandment, Ulil Amr. Those who have been given the power of, power of commandment, 
That means those who are knowledgeable people, the shiuks, the ulama, follow Allah, follow the messengers, and those who have been given knowledge. But it does not end there. It continues. If the people with knowledge, if they differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul. If two scholars say something, if they differ, go back to Allah and His Rasul. Check what the Quran says, check what the Sahih Hadith says. Therefore, if you ask me, what am I? I say I'm a Muslim. I'm first a Muslim, I'm last a Muslim. I follow the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. Anyone says anything, if it matches with Quran and Sahih Hadith, I follow it. If it's a deviation because of culture, because of the land, because this country has a different culture, India has a different culture, Sri Lanka has a different culture, Pakistan has a different culture, don't follow culture, follow Quran, the saying of Allah, the Creator, and the correct saying of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If it is not available in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith, it is not part of a deen. If it is proven from the Quran and Sahih Hadith, it is our deen. So Islam is only one, and there should not be division in this religion. Hope this answers the question, brother. The Quran says in Surah Jura'ah, chapter number 14 and verse 6, that whenever you get information, you check it up before you pass it on to the third person. Unfortunately, almost all of the media throughout the world, they do not follow this guidance given in the Torah's Quran. And this is exactly what happened just recently when an article came in most of the Indian newspapers, headlines, as well as the news channels, that I was responsible for inspiring one of the terrorists of the attack in Dhaka in Bangladesh, I inspired him to do this act of killing innocent human beings. I did a little research and tried to find out what was the story behind this. And when I spoke to the Bangladeshi official government people, they told me that they do not believe that I inspired this Bangladeshi terrorist to do this act of killing innocent people. That's a different issue, that yes, he was my fan. And there are millions of fans of mine throughout the world. And particularly in Bangladesh, Alhamdulillah, more than 90% know me and more than 50% are my fans. So he may have been my fan, but to say that I inspired him to kill innocent human beings is devilish. But this story occurred the first time in one of the leading newspapers of Bangladesh, the Daily Star. And what they did to sensationalize it, when they knew he was my fan, they went on to say that Dr. Zakir Naik, an Islamic preacher, he inspired the terrorist to do this act of killing innocent people, which is devilish. And this was picked up by the Indian media without verifying it. I challenge any of the media, whether it be the newspaper, or from the channels to show me any official source from the Bangladeshi government which says that they believe that this act was inspired by Dr. Zakir Naik of killing innocent human beings. This paper went to the extent of saying that I am banned in many countries, including Malaysia. The only country that I am aware of where I am officially, I was banned once from entering was UK. I don't have any proof that any country has banned me officially. And Malaysia banning me, it is illogical because this paper doesn't know, neither does the Indian press knows. If they had done little research, they would have realized that less than three years back in 2013, I got the Toko Mal Hijri Award, which is the highest award of Malaysia, which is given every year to a Malaysian and once in a blue moon to a foreigner. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the last 25 years, I was the fourth foreigner who got this award. And this award was given to me by the King of Malaysia and the Prime Minister of Malaysia. And since I've been awarded the highest award, do you think that they gave an award to a person who promotes terrorism, 
do you think the Malaysian intelligence is so stupid? And this paper said it and the Indian news media picked it up without verifying it. And just for the information, I was there in Malaysia just hardly less than three months back. In April, I had an official lecture tour to Malaysia. I was called by the chief minister of Tarangano and I gave a lecture. Yes, there were some Hindu organization by the name of Hindraf who objected and said that I should not be allowed to give speeches, I should be banned. And there was a strong reaction from the Muslim community. All the Muslims of Malaysia gathered together and they disagreed with it. So much so that in a span of four days, I met 14 ministers from this country, Malaysia. I met the Prime Minister, I met the Deputy Prime Minister, Home Minister, Religious Minister, Sports Minister, Education Minister, Telecommunication Minister, on and on. In four days, never in my life have I met more than 15 ministers in a span of four days. Alhamdulillah, my fan flowing in Malaysia is also very high. Just because one Hindu organization does not want me to come to Malaysia, that does not mean that the Malaysian government banned me. So this newspaper in Bangladesh, the Daily Star, says something which is unauthentic. From where did they get this? I don't know maybe from some website of some fanatic organization and they give it in the newspaper and the Indian media picks it up and most of the news channels, many of the newspapers give us headlines that Dr. Zakir Naik is banned in many countries, including Malaysia, which is absolutely wrong.